And great to have with us on the show right now, Dan Price, who is the CEO of credit card processing company Gravity Payments. You may remember a couple of years ago, Dan cut his salary to make sure that his employees could have salaries of their own of at least $70,000. His company, from what we understand during this pandemic, has not had to lay off anyone, which is certainly a great thing. Dan, great to have you on the show with us today. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. So how have you been able to navigate this and, and keep all of your, your people employed during this time? Well, a little bit of context on that. You know, our business is all about helping small businesses. We're a credit card processor and our revenue is derived when small businesses take, you know, credit cards and other forms of electronic payments. And in March, when the pandemic hit, uh, small businesses were really on the ropes. They lost 55% of their revenue, which meant that we had lost 55% of our revenue and we were losing about $1.5 million a month. We had maybe three or four months before we were going to go out of business. And our competitors, uh, the way they handled it was they increased prices on small businesses by as much as $100 per month, which we didn't want to do. And then uh, principally, they laid people off. In fact, one of our competitors laid off literally half of their employees to overcome yeah. it. And our employees were like, no, that's not going to happen. You know, we're going to stick together. And they voluntarily and also anonymously uh, asked to take pay cuts on an individual basis. 98% wow. of the company took pay cuts. But then also they went to work and started trying to get the right technology into hands of all these small businesses so that they could compete against the larger businesses that were able to remain open during the lockdown. So I would imagine that work from home was, was was part of this component? It was. We went work from home right away. And our whole team has been working from home uh, since March. And, you know, we are technically an essential business, but we don't think that it's right that our business can be open and then restaurants and other businesses like that can't. And so we figure by us working from home, we're hoping we can fight the pandemic and therefore allow more small businesses to not only remain open, but have fewer restrictions so that they can stay in business and make the United States, all of our towns, including where you live, Dan, the great place that it is. That's because yeah. of small businesses. And I think we can't forget that right now. How do you think then this pandemic and the work from home component uh, has adjusted your thinking about the operation that you're running? Well, I was always somebody who uh, felt that if somebody really wanted to work from home, they should be able to. There are certain teams at Gravity Payments that were resistant because they like to have the interactions and the interfacing in the office. So we were a company that would let each individual team decide. But I think as a company now, people are much more open to it and thinking about how do we be inclusive of people that can't come into the office every day so that they can add value too. So ultimately, I hope we'll be able to use it to be a more inclusive company. It sounds like as you were telling the story of, of your employees taking pay cuts and doing it anonymous, anonymously, do you think that that was partly because of the environment that you had kind of built and to a degree, what you did back in 2015 of cutting your salary. Sort of, but the opposite kind of, and I'll explain. So I think that most people would do things like that. And I think you would do that, Dan. And I think most of your listeners would do that. But I think these major corporations, they, they throw people under the bus all the time. They throw the little guy under the bus. And because of that, you know, we don't want to sacrifice anymore. And I, in fact, Gallup has found that the majority of employees out there are not engaged. They don't care about their company. That's not because they're not motivated or they're bad people. It's because the CEOs and the fat cats on top are basically stacking the deck in their favor. And so I think that this shows that if we can reorient our entire society, not only in the business world, but also politically around sticking up for the little gal guy person, yeah. then what we're gonna see is more prosperity going forward. Obviously, the state of small business has taken a hit this year because of the pandemic. Uh, and, and I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on how have you been able to try and reach out and help out other small businesses that you deal with on a normal basis? Because many of them are, are they're looking at, at every last penny, even more so right now. 
Yes, absolutely. And, you know, technology has been a good thing for a lot of our lives, but there's a certain part of technology that has allowed big companies to basically force small companies out of business. And then they've used things like political lobbying to uh, increase their advantage. And that's awful. So for us, we're just desperate to do everything we can to save small business because for the 19 years that I've been building this company since I was 17 years old, that was my one goal was just to fight against these major corporations bullying small businesses. And so they do it through money, they do it through regulations, they do it through technology. But specifically on the technology piece, we've been partnering with all sorts of software companies, including one called Joe Coffee that provides like a Starbucks quality ordering a head service for mom and pop coffee shops so that they can yeah. stay open even during a lockdown. We also can't really underestimate just the power of like the human heart and somebody's just desire to serve and help small businesses. One of our employees, his name's Austin Kameen, he hated how the likes of DoorDash and Uber Eats were taking 30% of these small businesses revenue when their margins aren't even that big. So he decided yeah. to drive for free for a restaurant for six weeks on the side, weekends, evenings, et cetera. And, you know, Dan, I could talk your ear for a couple hours about all the things that we're doing, but basically we're looking for software companies that want to connect with us and want to get their software into the hands of our 20,000 small businesses so that they can fight against Walmart, Amazon, Starbucks, and the like. How do you think what you've experienced uh, with your offices and people working from home, how much do you think that that's going to play out in businesses across America, not not only just in 2021, but but maybe longer term. Well, I'd like to say that I think it's going to play out a lot, but the data really suggests the opposite, because what we're seeing right now is just layoffs that are happening all over the place at the same time as we're having executive bonuses and re record highs with the stock market. And so if we're going to have record highs with the stock market produced by layoffs and this type of really nefarious behavior, we're going to see more of that behavior and there's going to be more and more pressure. I think we need, and I don't mean this kind of in a violent way at all, I want to be really clear, but I think we need some sort of an uprising where we turn the tide and decide to put people first instead of greed and money and really start to redefine how we look at the economy. And the more that we do that and we provide for regular people, the more you're going to see this really positive action where people collaborate, where they say we're all in this together. And the more that we see bullying and picking on everyday people out there, the more people are going to say, this is a scam. This doesn't make sense. Why would I cooperate when I'm just going to be taken advantage of? What's your advice for small business out there right now? I mean, it's really tough first and foremost. And I wanna say no matter what you do, it's a really tough situation. But I think that the first and foremost, admit the brutal facts of how difficult your situation is up to, be vulnerable. There's never been a, a better time to be vulnerable and honest than right now. Be vulnerable with your employees, with your customers, with the community, and let them give you solutions. Be very receptive. And then once you get a solution that works, you got to laser focus and scale that solution and make it repeatable. So it's a complex process. It's a difficult situation, but the ingenuity of the American small business owner really can help us get through this. I've seen quite a few articles recently that talk about the power of team. And it sounds like that, that your business is an example of that, that it, it truly is a team and they, they all work together. And it's part of the reason why you've been able to come through all of this over the, the last several months. Yeah. And also it's just an indictment of the lack of team out there in the corporate world right now, because when we were in third grade or fourth grade or fifth grade, we knew how to form teams. We knew how to take care of each other. That's just human nature. But the corporate behavior, the kind of like stock market, stock price at all, at all cost type approach to things, that's taking away that sense of team. And I think that we are an example of if you don't engage in that negative behavior, if you try to be loyal to, you know, that humanity inside all of us, that can be a way through some of these difficulties. Great having you with us today, Dan. It's a fantastic story. We wish you all the best in 2021. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Dan Price, CEO of credit card processing company, Gravity Payments.